So the best coaches that I know invest heavily in their own coaching development. And yes, this is partly because they are deeply interested in the subject matter, but it's also because it's the way that we can best serve our clients. And in this little snippet, Kate and I discuss some of the work we do so that we can show up as our best for those that we serve so that we can really hold it all, the tears, the joys and the breakthroughs. So let's dive in. We as coaches, there's an expectation. I think certainly as coaching psychologists, perhaps we do a better differentiation. As coaching psychologists, certainly, because the whole massive field of coaching does definitely not have this view. But I think there is a, a level where certainly my ethics, I hold the view that if I'm working at deep psychological level with people and they're placing that level of trust in me, that it's beholden on me to do a fair bit of my inner work, that I'm not sitting in the coaching room as a bunch of reactions but there is work that has been done over here. Now, I'm not saying it's all done, like I'm cooked, but that there is a responsibility over here with me to deal with my shit in a way that doesn't bleed across into the room. Absolutely. And that's why we have supervision. And so for me, supervision has been so important in stuff like this, in kind of understanding my own relationship responses. I had one guy who... He was my client, but he was the toxic leader. And it turned out because I did the 360 interviews that he was creating a lot of damage and a lot of psychological harm inside his team. And so I had to work with my supervisor on that and say, look, I've got this great relationship with him, but I have been at the mercy of leaders like that. And it just cuts me to to know that. And I'm on a mission, you know, (laughs) like I can't, I can't do this on the fence, you know, and I had to work through what was the right balance, you know, there. What was the right way? What was the, you know, not me rescuing him, but making sure that we weren't kind of sugarcoating things and stuff like that. And I just think that's great. Like it's so, but it's so important for me. I like to make sure that not only am I having supervision, but that I'm being coached as well. I think I need both. I actually prefer for me, I value coaching. Not more, but that gives me a lot of support for my own coaching work. Yeah, you're saying a bit more about that. Do you mean a place where you can be coached yeah literally to be it's that safe brave space for you yeah, exactly. And I found that even with my supervisors, I sometimes have to say to them, can we have a bit more of a coaching conversation today about me? Can I get some coaching? And that's fine. But I just, you know, if you ask me which one I had to choose between, I would probably go, don't take my coaching away. I need to have coaching in order to be able to, like you say, manage my own stuff as a coach and show up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We talk a lot about holding space, don't we? But like this, this space. Yeah. And I think that to to the conversations that I've been having recently with people leading all across different industries and and different levels, it's like I think there's a role of a leader doing that too. Like as we as their coach hold space, but then they as a leader must hold space for whatever size of team, whatever levels of responsibility, all of the pillars that you mentioned. Like that's a space. I yeah. need someone to be able to, is it soft? Is it, you know, what, what's the somatic language around it? Like, is it soft? Is it squishy? Is it stretchy? Is it hard? Is it big? Is it small? Is it hot? Is it cold? Like all of those things around that space. Absolutely. Right? Is that one of the hard to put your finger on things about a leader? What I think I see happening is whether I'm coaching a group or an individual is that if the coaching is working, they will naturally start taking that stuff into their work as well, right? They will naturally start holding space more because they will be in the habit of doing that or experiencing that on a regular basis, seeing the benefits, seeing what it opens up for them. So to me, the cascade effect of just us doing stuff with the individuals or the groups. And then I do often hear, look, actually, I've tried that with my team. Now I took that exercise into the team or I, you know, whatever it is. So one of my personal missions is to get each and every one of you started towards designing that life of your dreams and taking those first important steps in the direction of your 10-year vision. And so if you've been listening to recent episodes and feel like you do want to get started on this journey, but maybe you've got some ifs and buts, something's holding you back, I've got a really short quiz that might help you identify what's holding you back so that we can address it and hopefully get you started. So if that is of interest to you, just drop me a message on LinkedIn. I'm Maya Goodka there. Or send me an email at info at mayagoodka.com and I will send you a link to that quiz. Look forward to connecting with you next time. Bye-bye.